So with the last international break of the year basically done and nearly about to restart the Premier League festive period, I wanted to grade every Chelsea player so far this year. Just kind of feels like the right time to do it because although I guess neatly sometime in January, sometime after the Christmas period would be better, I feel like this is the last kind of breather we're going to have before we get into the serious stuff. So I'm doing this grading. We're doing a classic school grading, A to F, basically giving you my thoughts on each player. Very quickly, I'm omitting three players, Ben Chilwell, Connie Chukameka and Josh Akapom for various reasons and I think the most obvious one of all is barely minutes between them uh, mostly sub appearances Chirwell's barely played at all Chukameka cameos off the bench and Josh Akapom I think had one appearance but because of his old contract dispute with the club hasn't made any substantial progress this year in terms of minutes so it's very hard to give them a serious grade um, some other players have slightly made it because they've had some starts and decent minutes so far this year to at least make some form of a judgment please do let me know your grades whether you agree disagree with me in the comments below because I'm interested to hear how you feel about these players so far this year because I suspect as always there'll be different opinions which is absolutely fine let's start off with the goalkeepers Robert Sanchez you may be surprised. I'm giving him a C so far this year. I'm very critical of Robert Sanchez. I don't think he's the right fit for Chelsea's first choice goalkeeper. However, I'm someone that looks at reality, looks at what actually happens on the pitch. And even if a player I'm highly critical of does something good, you've got to acknowledge it and you've got to praise it because then you, I think you're just being disingenuous. And Sanchez objectively has had some good moments this year. There are numbers that show he has one of the best save percentages in the Premier League so far this year. He saved the penalty against Bournemouth, the saves he made late on against Nottingham Forest. Someone pointed out in my comments that probably got Chelsea four points, a win at Bournemouth and a draw at home to Nottingham Forest. So there's that side. Obviously, there have been negatives. Errors leading to goals. You have to factor that in. We speak about that a lot. I spoke about that on yesterday's show. So that's why it's a C and it's not higher. I hope it is higher. And to be fair, from what I suspected of Sanchez, a C is maybe better than I anticipated. Jorgensen, I'm going to give a D. I just don't think he's been as dominant and really showed enough to me in those lesser games, which I know can be difficult because how seriously can you take that competition? It's, it's one of those difficult things for all the B team players, right? That they are maybe struggling because they're coming up against a very weak opposition and it's hard to judge that opposition against a regular Premier League team even. So I guess for Jorgensen that's difficult. I just haven't seen enough to make me feel I'm really confident this guy is going to be first choice sooner rather than later. So that's why he's getting a D and I, and I think his performance against Newcastle when he did come up against decent opposition wasn't that great. Fullbacks, Mark Kukurea, I'm going to give a B. I think it's great that Kukurea is now just a solidified kind of assured nod when you say his name amongst Chelsea fans the fact that he's even at that point now in general conversation about Chelsea is wild given where his Chelsea career started given where it was even for periods of last season how he's come on since late last season under Pochettino of course going to the Euros and really cementing himself now as a first team of Renzo Maresca so a B simply because it's not that he's had any tragic performances but um, maybe not as good as some other players in this list and that's why they're getting slightly higher but I think Kukurea could very much be towards an A at the end of this season and hopefully he can improve he, he's come off the back of a really good performance against Arsenal so let's hope he continues that Reese James I'm going to give a C he barely played didn't play at all because of his injury problems and still it's kind of hard to know how he's going to fare throughout the course of the season how he's being managed how those minutes are going to be sort of looked at over the course of the year. And also, I think the way he's being used in recent weeks, I just hope he becomes a more progressive presence in Chelsea's team again, because it seems like Maresca may be in a way to try and save his fitness and not get those injuries that has been so persistent with Reese James in recent years. He's played kind of a retracted, quite defensive-minded role. He's even played left-back. He's usually behind the halfway line. That's not where we all want to see Reese James. We want to see him near the six-yard box, curling in those crosses, getting on the end of chances, looking to score, looking to contribute. That is where he's most dangerous. If he can move into that bracket for Enzo Maresca and maybe play that inside 10 role as we head towards Christmas, maybe we'll see exciting things. Malogosto is also going to get a C. I think it's been slightly disappointing for Malogosto, who I was a big fan of last year. I still am I'm a fan of him. I think as a fullback, as an option, I think he's been a good signing for Chelsea. I think the issue has been his adaptation to this inverted fullback system 
and what is being asked of him. I just don't think it looks like a comfortable fit. When he gets into those number 10 roles, his decision making and quality of pass and judgment just isn't good enough, which is why you naturally feel like Reese James should be in that role rather than him. And I feel like Malo Gusto, I still think he does his best work when he's playing a more conventional fullback role, when he's able to overlap, when he's able to play a low cross into the box, when he's able to kind of do the things that I think he was originally bought for. It's not that I think he's won, no, it's just... I don't think he's excelled in that role to, to the level that maybe Maresca hoped he would. Renato Vega is actually the highest out of the fullbacks for me, and that's a B plus. I think for what we wanted Renato Vega to be, a good rotational option, a solid player off the bench, I think Vega has offered that. He's also kind of already going onto that track of being a little bit of a cult hero. He loves a tackle, which I love to see from him. So that's why he's getting a B plus and maybe he could develop into more than just a B team sporadic cameo presence for Chelsea. Let me know your thoughts on Vega because I, I like what I see so far and maybe even could develop into a decent centre-back. I, I, I'm curious to see whether he does a reverse Ivanovic in his Chelsea career. Centre-backs now, Colwell's getting an A. Yes, his performance against Arsenal wasn't great. And yes, overall defensively, it's hard to kind of give top marks because... You know, it's been leaky. It hasn't been resolute. There's been some individual errors and there's been some structural problems that, that you can't always put on the individual centre-backs. But I think Colwell, from a passing point of view, we did a show on this back in September of how he's become Chelsea's hidden playmaker. How many good attacking moves come from Levi Colwell with the ball at his feet, with that left foot of his, carving a ball out wide into central midfield that opens up the pitch for Chelsea. That is integral. And I think the fact that now he's a solidified first choice centre-back for Chelsea... The big question is who partners him. That is still the big question. I think Colwell, though, is cementing himself as Chelsea's best defender and most reliable one at the moment. Fafana is going to get a C. He had a really encouraging performance against Arsenal, but so far this year, I think his timing's been off. He's looked a little bit sluggish. And to be fair, this is someone who hadn't played football for a year, so that's kind of understandable. Hopefully, now he's got maybe those... Um, sluggish parts of his game or just getting back to some sort of match fitness um, out of him he can now start to flourish again because I think there's a really talented defender there on the ball off the ball I think his movement can be brilliant and what he also could contribute moving forward as well it's just whether he can round that all up and, and also stay injury free is the key for him in his career because he's had so many really damaging injuries in a short period of time Tosin, so we're getting into the B team of kind of defenders now. Tosin is getting a C. He's had one decent Premier League performance against West Ham in September. In the Conference League games, he's been all right. I think he's been better than the other two we're just about to speak about, but um, still not good enough for me to really make me call for him to get into the Premier League starting eleven. But maybe out of the B team, he's the most likely to feature alongside Levi Colwell. Benoit Badishu is going to get an E. It's just really sad because I think Badishu, I think back to his first spell at Chelsea or kind of his first period after signing from Monaco and being really encouraged by what I saw composed dominant I think air really strong as well for whatever reason again he's had some injury problems of his own his confidence doesn't seem to be there he's he's not the most trustworthy a defender you know there's going to be a lapse in judgment at some point during the game and that is why I think he's firmly second or third choice now Dezassi is actually getting the lowest grade, spoiler alert, of Chelsea players so far this season. That's an F. I just think he's been pretty horrendous. Yeah, sure, he's been playing at right back, but I think his decision making, he, he just does not look an appropriate level for Chelsea. That's the most simple thing I can say about Axel Dezassi. And it's a bit of a shame, given it doesn't feel actually now like a necessary signing. We spent 35 million on a player who wasn't radically better than what we already had, and now looks not even good enough to be competing with the current batch of defenders. So, I don't think Dezassi will be here for the long term, unfortunately, and I don't think he's good enough to be playing regularly for Enzo Maresca. Central midfield, Romeo Lavi is going to get a B. He, of course, had a decent preseason, started off the season really well in that performance against Man City that got people excited about him, then got injured again. And the injury concerns, I think, are going to be one of the big question marks over Romeo Lavia's season and maybe Chelsea career. On the pitch, when he actually plays on the pitch, he reminds me you know, of kind of a, a very, maybe a younger Rora, maybe needs a bit more polishing, kind of Mikel in the sense that he does a lot of simple things very effectively and he doesn't stand out as kind of a blight in Chelsea's midfield. I think the big question for Romeo Lavia is whether he can add a bit more creativity, a bit more progressive passing, a bit more impact where people then can't throw, well, he's just not that dynamic a midfielder at him. 
I think that's going to come with time. I think he's got the talent to do it. And I also think he's got the all-round package that I think is worth investing in and giving more time, especially alongside Moises Caicedo. But he's going to get a B because he hasn't played as much. But I think generally his performances have been decent. Moises Caicedo is an A+. He has been, for me, Chelsea's most consistent player this season. He has been exemplary. He has been so valuable for us in a difficult area. He has established himself as a player that we've been crying out for, the way he eats up ground, his decision making, the precision of his tackling, how he covers for others, and also scores some wonderful goals at Old Trafford. Overall, his performances have been undeniable. And given where he was 12 months ago, we're no longer talking about how much he costs. We're just talking about how brilliant he is. And hopefully that continues. He is a standout player for Chelsea. And one of the if you talk about the, the names that have to be in every team sheet at the moment, he is one of the top two, undeniably. Enzo Fernandez, it's not that much of a surprise. He's going to have a lower grade so far this season, and that's a D. I could have gone actually a little bit lower because I think the expectation level and the, the way Enzo Fernandez is sold means that I think he's really underperformed expectation. He has underperformed expectation. There is still moments where he shows an ability and a creativity and a, and a guile on the ball that there is a player there if I think he establishes himself and can really nail down, maybe improve some of the weaknesses defensively in his game. Whether that can be improved upon in the Premier League and in, in the intense league, I'm not entirely sure. However, there still is quality there. It's just whether he can prove people like me, others wrong, that he can become a star midfielder. I don't see it at the moment, but there's still a long way to go this season. So Zari Cassidy is going to get a C. Not a lot to go by, and I think the big question for Cassidy is whether he is ever going to be more than a rotational player who eventually just gets sold off for profit. I think that is the the fear I have for Cassidy. I don't see enough in his game at the moment to really put him above anyone else. Um, that maybe is unfair. He isn't a regular starter, but kind of feels a little bit lost at the moment. And whether that will be rectified in January by a loan or sale, I think is is one to to ponder for the future. Kenny Jewsbury Hall is going to get a D. I mean, his, his performances are very from average to really poor, in my opinion. He has scored a goal against Ghent, which is a good moment for him. But the fact that he's barely played any Premier League minutes, I think his last Premier League minutes were in September, shows you how far he is away from being anywhere near the player that was sold in the summer. You know, in terms of the way he was integral at Leicester for Maresca, but just simply hasn't been at Chelsea. Will that change? I think the only way that's going to change is because of an injury crisis or he comes in and really excels and dominates and shows that he deserves to play for Maresca. But at the moment, a bit like Dezassi, it, it doesn't look like a, a really valuable signing and might be one Chelsea regret pretty soon. The forwards, we've got quite a few to go through here. So let's start off with the most obvious one. Cole Palmer is getting an A+. The goals, the sublime passing, the great decision making, the great finishing, the moments of wonder, the rock star vibe around Palmer inside Stamford Bridge is infectious. He is the star boy of Chelsea. Yes, I know the discussion has been in recent weeks, his performance level and impact on big games. But I think if there's any player at Stamford Bridge at Chelsea in recent years who deserves some grace, it's Cole Palmer, simply because of how integral he's been where would Chelsea be without his goals without his impact in the final third he is a level raiser I think the big question for Enzo Maresca is how do you improve what's around him so it isn't just all reliant on one guy that the opponent knows if we shut him down there's a good chance we're going to shut down Chelsea's attack Jackson has to step up Neto has to step up other players have to step up maybe you bring other players into the team and, and that will show its um its strength in the long term but I I, I just feel Palmer undeniably is going to be the player that wins Chelsea more games than we than we lose because he's that good. Noni Madawake, I feel like I varied between an A and a B. I'm going to go over B. Um, I think his performances have tailed off. However, I do think Noni is a lot more further in his development than he was 12 months ago. He's now playing for England regularly. Looks like a pretty valuable player there. I like how aggressive he is, how he goes at his fullback and has had some individually really good performances that have helped Chelsea gain some points. It's just, I think for Noni, the talent is there. I think the ability is there. The decision making needs to be rectified. I think he needs to have a little bit more to his game. It kind of at times feels a little bit Hakim Ziyech in the sense that you know he wants to cut onto that right foot and I think everyone else does and sometimes it's very hard for an opponent to stop him when he's at his best. I just want to see a bit more where he's has a bit more confidence to maybe go on the outside of a defender uh, because I think the aggression and the speed is there to really hurt teams. It's just making that more consistent. Pedro Neto is going to get an A. The reason being is I think his individual performances have been at times really impactful for Chelsea and I feel like what I 
banged on about all summer was Premier League ready players. Premier League ready players who could improve what we already had. And I think Pedro Neto has proven quickly to be that. He is a guy that played in the Premier League for a number of years, had looked like an exciting winger, someone who absolutely could provide maybe quick output for Chelsea compared to others. Neto has proven already, I think, to be a very shrewd piece of business and a good piece of business. I just hope touch Woody stays fit, which obviously was a big concern when we signed him. But I think he deserves an A and will remain a key part of Moresca's starting eleven going into the festive period. Jane Sancho is going to get a B plus. I wasn't too sure about this signing, how necessary it was, but I have to say his first few performances for Chelsea caught me off guard for how impactful they were. I think they tailed off before his injury. Um, I think the, the problem for Jane Sancho, and I'm giving him a B plus, is that he needs to simplify his game. It feels to me like he wants to beat everyone. And, and Jane Sancho at his worst is when it feels like he just wants to put on a showboating exercise, which he can do because he's got the skill and flair and technique to do it, unlike other players. However, that doesn't help his teammates. That doesn't, you know, it, it's just got to be simplified. And I think the selfless nature of Sancho that was there in the opening weeks of his Chelsea career that were really exciting and dynamic need to be reintroduced, I think, for him to cement himself as a Chelsea first teamer on that left side especially. Mikhailo Mudrik is going to get a C. I think this is slightly better than what I anticipated giving to Mikhailo Mudrik. I still think Mudrik is a really flawed footballer. I think his game intelligence is really poor. However, in the Conference League, when he has started games, when he has got substantial minutes, he's linked up well with Jarv Belex. He scored some brilliant goals and maybe is starting to gain confidence and maybe just maybe Enzo Maresca's more tough love approach to him is working out. However, I still think there's a long way to go for Mudrik. I really do. I know people want to see Mudrick succeed and it's like a Werner situation again which I don't you know it, it it baffles me a little not that you know obviously anytime he walks on the pitch I want him to be 10 times 10 out of 10 I want him to be amazing every Chelsea player we want from that but like in terms of a general discourse in terms of comparing him with other players which is what we're kind of doing here and individually his decision making his impact he, the the way he just failed to impact that Arsenal game off the bench when there were moments for him to break behind that Arsenal defensive line that's where he simply needs to be a million times better. And when you're not even, it's not like he's even getting himself into positions and then his execution of a final ball or a shot is bad. That, you know, that's frustrating, but that can be hopefully rectified. When he isn't even making the run, it looks like so far away from where he should be at this point in his Chelsea career. Drow Felix, of course, very much has been a B team player. I, I'm going to give him a B plus for a B team player. Um, I think he's good enough and technically proficient and kind of classy enough to dominate those games as he already has. The big thing for I think for Drow Felix is, you know, where does he fit in the long term for Chelsea? How does he become more than just that in his career? I think based on my overall opinion of Felix, I think that's where he is as a player because I don't think he's consistent enough in the bigger games. I think when you do get to the bigger games, when you need someone to actually have a final product in it in, in the final third. I don't I don't think he offers it more um I don't think he offers it enough. So that's why he is relegated to kind of a lesser role at Chelsea. Whether that can click into gear and he can find that, you know, final piece of the jigsaw where he becomes a cemented first teamer. Not entirely sure. It still is another one of those roles where sure he's offered goals and he's offered moments of um excitement for people and I understand why people enjoy watching him in like lesser games still kind of ponder whether Chelsea would have been better off signing a kind of a natural number nine in this position rather than having another number 10 not someone who's gonna you know clog up you know where Palmer plays where Nkunku could play it's kind of a, a broader question it's not that Felix on his own has had an awful season he hasn't but it's just where is he going to be in like nine months time I think is is a huge question and whether Felix is content with that. Tariq George just does enough to get a grade here and he's going to get a C. Excited to see him get more minutes in the Conference League. I hope Maresca continues to play him in that in that competition because I think it's worth it for his development. He still is raw. He still is erratic. He's desperate to score his first Chelsea goal, but I think he's got great um, speed, great tenacity, and through the academy, I think, has developed in the right way and definitely deserves to be getting senior minutes now. It's just whether there's enough there for him to, to go at whether he's playing on the right, whether he's playing on the left. I think there is a directness to his game that I hope isn't kind of beaten out of him as he gets into a senior game because I want to see wide players go at their fullback aggressively. There isn't enough of that. That's why I like Noni Madawake. I want to see wide players go out and be, and be aggressive against their fullback. And I think Tyreek George absolutely has that and hopefully will stay with the Chelsea first team for the entirety of the season and can gain more minutes, substantial minutes that hopefully will be good for his development. Now we move to the strikers, the final part of this, 
Nicholas Jackson is getting an A. He doesn't get an A+. Plus. However, I'm a big Jackson fan. And I just think all around the development of this player over the past year has been wonderful. And the way he started the season really strongly. The numbers he's putting up are already commendable. But I just think all around his game is really, really good. I mean, it's similar to a similar criticism or, or kind of thing that I feel like Jackson needs to work on like Palmer right I think in that Arsenal game he was kind of bossed a little bit against Gabriel and Saliba a higher caliber of defender but in most games I feel like Jackson's got the all-round mobility decision making aggression just his decision making and the way he helps the team move forward offers a focal point his speed in behind I think he's going to trouble majority of defenses and he again a bit like Palmer and a lot like a lot of players in his squad still very young still maturing and given what he's already done at this point in his career and given he is the cemented first choice the numbers speak for themselves and the performances now speak for themselves Jackson is a really good player for Chelsea so he's getting an A. Nkunku is going to get a B plus. Now, I think Nkunku has done everything he could have at this point in his Chelsea career. Um, of course, he was injured for a lot of it last year. He's scoring goals. He's Chelsea's top goal scorer in all competitions. The huge question that we spoke about after the Arsenal game was, it's. I think it's now time for Maresca to try and find a way to get Nkunku into that Premier League eleven on a more consistent basis. I feel like that is the big discussion and debate point because I think he's so good as a goal scorer, as a level raiser. Sure, maybe the conversation could be, is there a role really for him in this Chelsea team where Palmer plays, but I, that doesn't, like, Palmer could move to the right and still be as impactful because we saw it under Mauricio Pochettino last year. Nkunku is too good for us to just leave to the side and eventually he moves on without much fuss. Nkunku, I think, could develop by the end of this season to be an A, A-plus type of player where I think he could be as important to Chelsea as Cole Palmer. The huge question is whether... Maresca wants that, whether Chelsea will do that, and whether, of course, Nkunku performs up to that level. Like with any player, they've still got to perform to that level, but I just think his output so far has been undeniable, and it's not like he's failing in the lesser games, which is doesn't give you much room to think. And you think about his goal against Bournemouth, I thought was wonderful, and it's the sort of movement inside a crowded six-yard box that Chelsea haven't had for a long period of time, and that's what excites me about Nkunku, and I just hope it isn't wasted at Chelsea. Lastly, Mark Gu is going to get SC. He still is a very, 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 very raw player, and I'm not entirely sure the long-term plan for Mark Gu. Because I can absolutely see Chelsea in either January or the summer signing another centre forward. And there, there always is a clamour for us to sign new centre forwards. And then you kind of ponder, where, where does Mark Giu go? Already this season, he is on the fringes. He's I, I hope for his sake, he gets to play the last couple of Conference League games and maybe the FA Cup game. But already you're kind of at a stage of his development where you think this kind of isn't helpful for him to just kind of be relegated to those games. He needs to be starting to get anywhere close to where he should be for Chelsea at the moment I don't think he's going to get that he is going to be you know it's not that he's a guaranteed B teamer it was quite a surprise actually he started the Noah game so maybe that's changing now and he did get his goal which was good I think he's a great presser I think he's a willing presser he's someone that clearly works his socks off and I think in terms of a build there's something there to work with but it's just how long is is his time going to be at Chelsea? The long-term kind of prospects of that centre-forward role when you still have Jackson being a very young player, Nkunku maybe remaining, Chelsea going out and signing someone else. What happens with Mark Gu? This was a question I think I asked in the summer of just like the pathway for these players and kind of what's the point in signing them? And again, for three million, was it three or four million? I, let's just be honest about this. It's quite clear what Chelsea maybe in a, in a very cynical way look at Mark Gu and think to themselves, if he can develop into something, we're basically guaranteed a profit on this guy. And unfortunately, that's where I see Gu at the moment. That Listen, he still is very, very raw. It's just, I personally think he probably needs a loan because I don't see him developing radically with the minutes he's gaining at the moment, which isn't a lot. So those are my thoughts. That is my grades. Let me know yours in the comments below. Follow me across the socials at Son of Chelsea and I will see you again very soon. All the best. 